structure they estimate we can see spaces between the lateral incisor and the canines uh, between the upper centrals and between the uh, upper laterals and um, upper right um, right and left canines let's take a look to the um, lateral x-ray we can see an increased uh, curve of speed an extreme proclination of the upper incisors and a uh, very hard to achieve retraction of the upper incisors. Why? Because of the fact that the lower incisors are severely excluded and this is a, a consequence of the very deep curve of P, the upper incisors cannot retract because they would hit the, uh, the lower incisors and this would generate a severe trauma. So the first step in this case was to the intrude the upper lower incisors. Let's uh, do some considerations together about the um, lower intrusion uh, need of uh, the patients. We have um, uh, the need, we share the need to intrude the upper to level the lower curve P because it's impossible to um, retract the upper incisors. But the, our question is if it's possible, whether it is possible or not to increase the vertical dimension of occlusion in this patient with a very strong muscular activity. We know from the literature that uh, extrusion of posterior regions is sure, uh, for sure stable during the growth, but unfortunately it's uh, unstable after the growing period. And we know from the literature that uh, segmental arch technique allows us to intrude uh, lower incisor, lower and upper incisors, with no or um, insignificant posterior extrusion. And this is the reason why we decided in the Polos case to start by uh, intruding the lower upper incisors. We know that uh, to obtain a pure intrusion of the lower incisors is quite hard with segment with um, continuous arch wire for two reasons because the intrusion forces act um, buckle to the center of resistance of the lower incisors and this creates a tendency to uh, for the incisors to flare this is the first reason the second reason is that uh, working with um, second, with uh, continuous arch wire it is very hard to create the exact very light amount of forces indicated for a pure incisor intrusions. This is the reason why we decided to use, in this case, the segmental arch technique in order to obtain a, um, a preliminary intrusion of the lower incisors. We started by intruding the lower incisor and I would like to share with you the, some details of uh, our appliance. We have uh, Passive sectional wires 19 per 25 bonded directly on the enamel of the lower, inci um, the lower incisors. This is a flow reason. Uh, the reason is uh, that um, uh, connects a 19 per 25 stainless steel wire to the uh, enamel of the teeth. And then we have a 17 per 25 TMA intrusion wire which um, intrudes the lower incisor. Here we can share a detail of the ligature of the intrusion arch wire. Let's take a, a look uh, also the posterior setup of the appliance. We have uh, considered together um, the presence of the 19 per 25 stainless steel wire uh, connecting all the incisor um, for the flow raising on the enamel of the lower incisor. Then we have a 17 per 25 TMA intrusion arch which is connecting the anterior dental unit uh, given by the, um, the block of the four incisors to, uh, uh, to the posterior teeth. The solid stiff 19 per 25 stainless steel wire makes uh, the four center of resistance of the incisors become just one center of resistance of a group. So uh, we now are uh, discharging the intrusion forces on a block of teeth consisting in all the four incisors uh, soundly connected together. The incisors uh, um, are intruded uh, discharging the reaction forces on a posterior block of teeth uh, created by connecting by using a 19 per 25 cell wire 
uh, first molar, first, um, then second premolar and canine as well, connected together. And the 19 per 25 semi-steel is uh, bonded with flow resin to the enamel of the um, corresponding teeth. A 17 per 25 TMA intrusion arch, as we have seen together, uh, tends to intrude, we can see here in the drawing, uh, tends to intrude the um, incisor. And here we can observe just two dental units, an anterior block uh, consisting in the, uh, up, the lower incisors and a posterior block in which posterior regions are um, suddenly, are rigidly connected together. This makes the center of resistance of the different teeth become just one and the solder lingual arch connecting uh, uh, posterior left and right uh, lower regions makes the two centers of resistance become just one. So we have a system with two teeth working. We have a center of resistance on the posterior unit and a center of resistance at the anterior unit. A 17 per 25 intrusion uh, TMA wire intrudes the lower incisors. And here we can observe, drawn in uh, yellow, a deactivated superlastic intrusion arch wire and uh, the system, the, the overall force system, with just two dental units. And uh, this is appliance, this segmental appliance can, that can seem quite strange uh, if considered regarding the elasticity and the rigidity of the appliance is uh, uh, somehow uh, something quite easy because just two dental units are inserted in the appliance. After beginning the uh, lower incisor intrusion, we um, perform uh, enough lower incisor intrusion. So uh, the next step is, uh, the next need is to retract upper intrusion. Uh, let's decide together how to make an upper incisor intrusion and uh, let's uh, uh, think together about what happens if we tried to use in this case a class 1 elastic uh, force for retraction. If we use the, something as a um, continuous arch and a power chain or an, a class one elastic in order to uh, retrocline the uh, upper flared incisors. During the retraction of the incisors, the gingival margin of the incisor will tend to um, go downward and uh, the horizontal force, a pure horizontal force would tend to create a deep bite worsening and uh, this would make the overbite uh, worsen and that would be opposite to the treatment goal for our patients. We have in this case to um, consider the use of uh, an intrusive force which is uh, much more indicated. We could try to apply this force on the buckle side, but uh, that would give us a problem. A buckle force would tend to intrude and uh, even more flare the upper incisor because it would pass buckle to the center of resistance of the upper incisor. Uh, we could try to change the side of the um, point of application of the force uh, passing to the palatal side of the incisor and that would be uh, much more indicated from a biomechanical point of view because it would tend to intrude and to retract the uh, to retrocline the um, upper center incisor of that it is quite easy to uh, obtain anchorage in the palate because we can use shrimp and palatal bars with hooks in order to obtain a point of application of, of a retraction force so we decided to skip in this case to the palate in order to retract and retrocline the upper incisors. Uh, before going on, I would like to uh, share once more with you um, the biomechanical scheme, why it's quite dangerous in this case to use an horizontal force uh, because it would tend to generate a deep worsening. And why in this case, it's quite indicated an intrusive force on the plateau side in order to maintain the good vertical position of the upper uh, incisors. Uh, let's go back to, uh, to Paolo and let's go back to his appliance. Here we have an um, um, anchorage device in the uh, upper arch. We have connected, stiffly connected together up 
upper an upper to a smaller um, the left and on the right side and the uh, first premolar on the left and on the right side the connection of the teeth is very stiff because we have uh, uh, three transpalatal <laughs> bars one connecting the molars and a cross welded bar connected the premolars with the molars on uh, as an as a cross uh, with the shape of a uh, cross. All uh, the bars um, are uh, soldered together in order to obtain a, a very high rigidity. We have some pins in the posterior, uh, the most posterior uh, transpalatal bar, uh, useful to obtain uh, anchorage for uh, elastics for intrusion and the retraction. Uh, elastics positioned on uh, eyelets bonded on the palatal side of the upper incisors. So let's start to retrocline the upper incisor and after a while teeth start retracting and then we can go for alignment of the anterior segment being careful not to lose the good spatial orientation as we've seen in the initial part of uh, um, the, our uh, uh, meeting together and uh, we have the palatal anchorage that is uh, Retract, uh, retracting and um, intruding the upper incisors. Here we have a good incisor retraction and so after the vast majority of the uh, space closure we can go for a continuous search wire and going for finishing and detailing with minor uh, aesthetical issues. Here we have final records with uh, good overjet and overbite correction and um, good stable posterior occlusion maintenance. I would like to show you final uh, OPT of the patient and uh, final um, lateral cephalometrics with uh, the good leveling of uh, the lower um, Q over P and the um, correction of the flaring of the upper incisors. Now let's uh, summarize uh, some things together and let's go to the final part of our um, meeting of today. The segmental arch technique is based on uh, the strong distinction between active and reactive unit, meaning teeth to move and teeth not to be moved. It's based on the use of different sections and different materials of the wires. It is based on the different stiffnesses on the, the wires. Um, a very important point of the segmental arch technique is the possibility to generate very light forces and to, uh, to um, generate the system of forces ideal for uh, specific movements, different specific movements. And now let's go back to the uh, initial example we did considering when considering a continuous aligned arch wire. And uh, let's do some consideration about the initial positions of the um, teeth. We may imagine that there are some teeth in a good initial position, such as the teeth uh, um, colored in green. We have molars, we have some premolars, some cannons, and two incisors in a good initial position. So a question could be, do we need, do we really need to move them? There are some other teeth that are in a bad position and these are the teeth colored in the red. So we have teeth in a good position, colored in green, and teeth in a bad position, colored in red. A question that we could ask ourselves if it is, if it is uh, really necessary to move the teeth in a good initial position, uh, or if it's indicated to move only the teeth in a good position, in a bad position. Should we decide not to move some teeth, uh, um, we could decide to share them together with rigid uh, wires. For example, uh, 19 per 25 running on the uh, incisors in um, the brackets on the buckle side and um, transpalatal arch running on the palatal side of the upper first and um, on the upper first molars. This uh, could create a solidarization, a very rigid unit of the, uh, the posterior teeth in a bad position. Here in the frontal region we have an incisor that we have supposed to be in a good position and we might decide not to uh, bond it. So we could even remove the brace on, uh, on, 
on the, the bracket on the, on this stove could even remove because it's in a good position and we uh, don't need to, to move it at all. And now let's go back to the example we did at the, uh, at the beginning of the treatment uh, when we considered the palatal displacement of an upper second premolar, which is displaced in a cross-bite position in the palate. If we decided to have a selective movement of the, um, of the premolar in a uh, buckle way, we could consider the choice of the segmental arch technique. The technique allows us to, to maintain still, to not to move the um, uh, teeth that are in an initial good position uh, as uh, the first molar and the first uh, upper premolar. In order to prevent any undesired movement of uh, these two teeth in a good position, we could use a stiff sectional wire 19 per 25, for example, uh, inserted in the braces of the molar and the first premolar. And uh, we might connect the molar to the opposite molar in order to obtain a very stiff, a very sound um, dental unit. This would allow us not to move the upper um, molar and the uh, upper first uh, premolar. Regarding the uh, second premolar that needs to go toward, uh, we could uh, apply by using the segmental arch technique uh, uh, the idea for system uh, that makes the tooth go outward. And this is a single force passing through the center of resistance. And uh, this force can be generated in so many different ways. One could be, for example, a cantilever, as we have seen in some clinical cases before, a piece of wire um, bent in order to generate, once it has been ligated to the upper second premolar, a single force uh, pushing the premolar outward. I would, would like to show you one last case and um, and uh, to summarize all we have shared together, uh, let me introduce you to Mohamed. <laughs> He's another patient born in Egypt and now living in, uh, in Italy. It's a patient that, uh, who lives in Turin, but uh, um, he was born in, in Egypt. He's a very nice boy and uh, he came to me complaining for his big diastema between his uh, upper incisor, is uh, uh, a very evident uh, um, uh, aesthetical issue. Mohamed has a good posterior occlusion, has only sacric S, and uh, he has a um, limited possibility of, of uh, expense, so he, uh, he cannot afford very, very, very uh, major treatments, and he has an altered Bolton index, and um, considering the altered Bolton index, we know that we uh, need to correct in a stable way uh, the, the anterior occlusion, we need to enlarge upper incisor of 3.5 millimeters. And uh, we decided uh, with the uh, restorative dentistry to close the diastema between, uh, up, between upper central incisors and to create a space medial to the upper La right and left lateral incisors in order to obtain the space to add some uh, materials to add some composite enlarging uh, the uh, upper lateral incisors. We decide to close the diastema in the easiest way possible for two reasons because um, the patient has an excellent posterior occlusion that we don't want to change and uh, the patient asks us a um, quite easy way to correct this problem. So we go to the biomechanics and we decided to uh, create a very easy, uh, a very basic uh, appliance um, designed by uh, the biomechanics principles. Let's um, think together about where are the forces needed to uh, close in a bodily way the diastema, the gap between the upper central incisors? We know from the biomechanics that uh, uh, the force required passes through the center of resistance in a frontal way. But we also know from biomechanics that this is um, 
that is valid from a frontal point of view. But from a coronal, from an occlusal point of view, uh, it is not possible to apply the force uh, um, passing through the center of resistance because uh, the force uh, forces cannot be applied inside the tooth itself. So we have two options to apply them on the buccal side, but this would give us a problem because the teeth would tend to rotate, to misrotate rotate uh, reciprocally while closing the diastema. Or we have a second option, so no way to um, to uh, apply the forces uh, from a back point of view. We could uh, we could switch to the pallet, skip to the pallet, but we would have an opposite problem because while closing the diastema, the teeth would rotate in a distal way. The solution we decide to use uh, is to apply a, a force both on the palatal as in the buckle side, creating so a so-called double cable mechanics, which means to um, apply forces on both the sides of a tooth to prevent uh, undesired rotation. And this is what we decide to do a very easy cases for uh, MOMED, we decided to uh, use a um, basic cementage technique with a reciprocal anchorage, meaning that uh, uh, both uh, the incisor go together, going to close the diastema. I would like to show you the, uh, the system, the, the appliance, very easy. We have a, a bracket for upper incisor uh, with a vertical slot uh, underneath the main 22 per 28 slot. And in the vertical slot, we have a power arm that allows us to um, apply an elastic power chain um, at the same height of the center of resistance of the upper incisors. We also have a guide wire uh, useful to prevent undesired movement of uh, the incisors and uh, uh, this is a um, bigger uh, picture of the appliance. We can see something from the palatal side because it has been uh, bonded to braces on the palatal side of uh, um, the upper incisors uh, whose uh, role is to apply a, a palatal force. We started in December 2011 and uh, the teeth were in contact in February 2012 and after that we decided to remove the braces and to ask the um, restorative dentist to enlarge uh, upper lateral incisors and this is the final result. I think it's quite easy, it's quite um, a good results and the initial and uh, the final records and in the final records I like to share with you the um, very nice posterior occlusion and this was possible because of the fact that the posterior occlusion was not modified at all. This is just natural destitution of the patient. Uh, we just moved uh, in an exclusive way upper right and upper central incisor closing the diastema. No other thing, no other tooth was uh, touched at all. And so uh, this is the uh, very nice natural occlusion of the patient that I personally do not want to change because I can't do better than, uh, than this. And this is the case at the beginning and of uh, the end of the treatment. Here is a follow-up uh, you know, from uh, May 2013. And uh, now we can go on uh, the very final part of uh, our um, uh, Zoom meeting together, uh, talking um, about uh, very, very fast about the tools of the segmental arch technique, which are uh, uh, wires with uh, different stiffness, uh, wires in, uh, in uh, long sticks, and springs of different uh, kinds, cantilevers, which can be used to generate forces and moments in a very different way. Loops, bendings done in different way. Uh, elastics used to um, selectively move the teeth. Power arms, very useful to apply force as close as possible to the center of resistance of the teeth to obtain a bodily movement. And then transpartal bars, lingual arches, very useful to apply um, to increase our anchorage. And so let's go to the flowchart of tough in segmental arch technique. Uh, that is 
quite different from straight wire approach. The first question we ask ourselves when we do some segmental arch technique is which movement do we want to perform? The second question is which is the proper for system we want to um, able to obtain that specific movement we uh, want to obtain. The uh, third question is where can we discharge the counter force and this leads us to the concept of anchorage. And fourth, last but not the least, is the appliance design. And it's quite curious to share with you the idea that uh, the appliance design is the last point in the flowchart of TOF in segmented arch technique. And so we go to the conclusion. Uh, for sure, the vast majority of our patients can be treated with a um, conventional approach uh, with statewide technique, removable appliances and clear liners and so on. But a minor part of uh, the patient can um, can obtain benefit uh, from uh, the uh, segmental arch technique approach with, uh, that allows us to treat the most severe and the most atypical case and allows us to do very specific dental movement without changing, without altering all the rest of the occlusion. It can be um, indicated in some specific uh, um, clinical uh, conditions. The segment arch technique has for sure a problem, uh, the long uh, curve of learning because uh, the beginning, uh, at the beginning it is quite hard to, um, to start uh, with segment arch technique cases and the beginning is very slow, it is necessary to, uh, to refresh, to brush up, to um, sometimes study uh, some biomechanics, some basic biomechanics but then there is a steep acceleration, uh, results uh, arrive in a very, very fast way, and then we go to a proficiency, and then a plateau, and at uh, that point we are able to do a uh, segment arch technique case. But uh, uh, the risk is uh, to stop ourselves at the, the initial part of, of the slope when uh, we see that we um, obtain uh, results uh, in a relatively slow manner because uh, uh, studying biomechanics can, can be uh, uh, quite uh, quite difficult but if we do not uh, surrender and we hold on uh, we can go to the separate acceleration and we can learn biomechanics. Should you need to um, to um, share, uh, to, to study some biomechanics, uh, I would like to invite you to consider the Italian Society of Orthodontics and Segment Rush Technique, which is called CBOS. Uh, we are an Italian society uh, with international membership uh, possibility and we uh, give biomechanics courses and segment rush technique uh, courses, uh, even theoretical and uh, practical. Um, it is now possible to subscribe to, to become members of our society, but from uh, 2021 the international membership will become free for our international members because we would like to share, we would like to have new uh, members from all over the world and uh, we would be glad uh, if you could be interested in our project. I would like to show you some picture uh, about our courses, they are theoretical and practical as well and we can be interested uh, for you uh, if you are interested in these uh, uh, topics. And I would like to share you one of uh, uh, the um, a picture at the end of a CBOS uh, course. We are a young society and we will be very happy to have uh, uh, foreign year students uh, with, uh, with us and um, to share um, knowledge and become friends. So uh, we have uh, now arrived at the, the end of uh, our night together. It has been a big pleasure for me and for Nazari to be with you and I hope we can uh, stay and uh, keep in touch with uh, with you. Uh, you can find uh, our links on our email address. Uh, you can find uh, Nazario's uh, email address and my uh, email address. You can write us. We uh, will answer uh, you uh, for sure. 
Should you uh, want to contact us, you can also find us on Facebook, uh, Nazario Rinaldi on Francesco Fava, uh, and um, we have received so many uh, friendship requests from, from uh, uh, Egypt. This gave us uh, so much pleasure because it, it is uh, so nice to have new uh, friendship from all over the world. So, uh, should you want to um, keep in touch with us, do not hesitate, let's link together on the social network. It's a big pleasure to be here and a big honor for me to be here with you and I think now we can um, go for uh, final questions. Thank you Dr. Francesco. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, fruitful and, uh, and informative lecture. Uh, uh, just a minute to, to start my video. Uh, I have, uh, do you listen to me? Do you listen yes, to yes, my voice? Perfectly. Okay. okay. Uh, I have a lot of questions, but I'm Thank trying you. to select uh, okay. a group of them. Uh, the first question was from uh, Dr. Uh, Sigalian Uztak. Uh, he asked, do we need lingual arch when doing intrusion to lower incisors TMA? Thank you for the question. Yeah. I uh, use, uh, uh, I try to um, use the um, whiteboard. Share screen, whiteboard. Yeah, yes, it is uh, most of the time indicated because the reaction forces of the intrusion are extrusive forces. I try to do my best with a very basic drawing. Yeah. I'm not Picasso. <laughs> you are? <laughs> I'm not a very good... Uh, yeah, yeah. My son is six years old and is much better than me in drawings, but now he's sleeping. It's late. <laughs> I can't call him. It's we. I, I like to show you a very easy drawing. Yeah. Uh, here we have, from a point, front a point of view, uh, the lower uh, first molars and uh, we have an intrusion arch wire. I'll draw it in a different color so it's easier to. Uh, where can I change the color? Draw it as a format. I want to draw it in yellow. Ah, very nice. Ooh. We have an intrusion arch wire. I change the colors uh, again. We have forces of intrusion mm -hmm. that generate extrusion forces on the reaction unit. So the molars will be loaded with an extrusive force acting buckle regarding the center of resistance and it will lead uh, the molar to extrude but also to lingualize because of the fact that the um, force is applied buckle to the center of resistance of the lower incisor. For this reason it can be considered the indication to uh, use a lower um, lingual arch that I draw this way. I hope mm -hmm. I answered the question. Yes, uh, yeah. Should I not be uh, clear, um, the colleague can, ask, can write no. <laughs> on the email. Or... No, no, it's clear, it's clear for us. Um, thank you. Another question. Uh, I think we have uh, two uh, share in the same question. The first is from uh, uh, someone. He did not mention his name. He he asked. Uh, I, uh, he asked you. In the last case, the force of intrusion for the lower incisor, the force direction where libially to the center of resistance of this group of teeth. Why you counteract? No, I think he, 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 he asked what, uh, how, how you, are, you can counteract the flaring during intrusion of the entire incisors. Th thank you for the, the yeah. question. I go yeah. back to the um, yeah. representation so yeah. I can. In this case, I had two possibilities uh, to uh, share, uh, let's do one, share. Okay. In this case, I had to decide where to uh, bond the um, incisor unit, and I decided to go back to the uh, lower segment 
because I think that the, the case of the question is uh, this one. Okay. I decided to uh, bend here, to, to ligate here the, uh, the intrusion arch because uh, uh, the other option that I had in order to prevent any uh, flaring of the, the lower in incisors was to extend the segment distal was to extend the segment distal to the uh, lateral incisors and um, uh, use not a single intrusion arch but two cantilevers for the intrusion. Uh, I preferred not to adopt this, uh, this, uh, this uh, configuration, this setup, because I was scared that the patient that had a very strong uh, occlusional pattern could break the, um, the uh, device. Mm -hmm. I would like to, once again, make a drawing if it's uh, indicated, if it's quite curious, but I would like to answer in the most possible complete way. Mm -hmm. We have six, we have five, five. we have four, three. and we have a group of lateral incisors and central incisors. So we can draw here one and two with their roots going slightly to the back and we have the center of uh, resistance here. I decided to bond the wire on the, the buckle position and this has for sure created a uh, relatively short um, distance between the point of application of the force and the tendency of the tooth to flare and this is sure. Uh, the other option was to bend the wire in, um, uh, along the, the, the projection of the center of the resistance, but I was scared that this would, uh, could create some problems of um, integrity of the appliance. Mm -hmm. I want to share one last thing about this question. Is uh, um, an, uh, I think I did in this case. I ligated, I think that we can share together, that could be interesting for uh, the, the colleague. I made a stainless steel ligation, I hope it is possible to see here or um, just look into for the image in which you can see, hey, here you can see uh, a metal ligation uh, used to try to prevent a flaring of the lower incisor. That was a trial in order to, um, a, a way to prevent an excessive um, extrusion of the lower incisors. I want to share uh, one last picture. Uh, this is initial position of the uh, beginning um, of the incisor. I considered as acceptable a slight um, proclination. It could help me in leveling the the lower covers, yeah, but uh, the question is uh, very good. Okay, okay, okay. thank you. Um, thank you. Another question, Dr. Uh, Francesco from Dr. Tabarak. Uh, who, he asked what about patient aesthetic consideration and presence of many anterior metallic wires? Sorry? What about patient aesthetic consideration? in presence of many anterior metallic wires. In which um, case? Uh... Um, I think that the question is general. It means the acceptance, l'accettazione del paziente uh, di avere tutti questi fili metallici. It can be a problem when if patient uh, requires no, uh, no, no, no braces at, uh, at all. Mm -hmm. uh, segmental arch technique has um, a, a big advantage um, in respect to, to, to other, uh, to other uh, possibilities and it's, the, uh, it's very fast, gives uh, very, very quick results and it gives us some advantages. Uh, when considering um, the importance of the, uh, reducing the, 
the aesthetical impact, we can go for uh, aesthetical braces or uh, maybe we can try to go to the lingual side of the appliance and that can be an, uh, an option. But uh, if the patient does not accept uh, any, uh, any, any metal in his front side, it can sometimes be a problem, of course. Thank you. Uh, hi, Dr. Nazaro. Uh, <laughs> how are you? Uh, uh, another question also from uh, Dr. Mohammed Taufi in uh, Paolo case, how can we control the procrastination of lower incisor which are accompanied with intrusion using segmented arch? I think you already answered this question. Yeah, you already answered this. Another question from Hassan Agbinar. Uh, do you use uh, TBA, uh, transpalatal arch, and segmented arch technique in most cases? Uh, would you recommend using miniscrew instead of uh, transpalatal arch? Uh, in, in while doing uh, the question is referred while doing segmental arch technique. No, he 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 he, he asked in this technique in segmented arch technique. Yes. Uh, do you use uh, transpalatal arch in most cases? Yes, we yes. We do. He asked, he ask, would you recommend using mini screw nested off, nested off uh, as an alternative to transpalatal arch? Yes, it can, see, can be considered an, uh, an option. Uh, I think that we need to consider, uh, we need to consider um, the, the fact that uh, we need to insert the minus screw, so we need anesthesia and things like that, and we risk to lose the minus screw. Uh, mm -hmm. We know from literature that one, about one, screw on five about uh, tends to become loose and this can uh, reduce the, um, the, the reliability of these uh, of this uh, option but in many clinical cases or in uh, um, uh, mutilated occlusion with uh, many loss of or with loss of many teeth it uh, minus screws can be an excellent option uh, thank you uh, another question from dr el hassanin he asked why you why use dental anchorage from, from opposite side and not using indirect anchorage by mini screw? We use uh, dental anchorage from opposite side, the other side, the in, other in, side. In which case? Yeah, uh, I think uh, in most cases you you uh, you, insist, you insist you insist to adjust the occlusion in post side because you consider the occlusion is a is very important. Uh, uh, not to disturb it during the treatment. I think that maybe the question could be regarding this case. Mm, maybe, so, maybe, and mm. and I think also in other cases. Uh, you, you, he, I think he 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 considers the uses of transpalatal arch, uh, meaning you depend not only on the side of movement, but also you take anchorage from the other unit. In other side, by using the, tra the transpalatal arch, you connect the post segment and make the center of resistance in the middle of the arch as one unit from the opposite side, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, another question from Dr. Zaglul. He asked, thank you for amazing webinar. He said, according to Nanda, according to Nanda, the center of resistance of maxillary incisor during intrusion, it's located just distal to root of upper lateral incisor, right? This is his, uh, his uh, uh, question, uh, uh, but, uh, but no question, <laughs> another, another. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is good uh, knowledge. Thank you for Dr. Zaglur for, for this information. Uh, Dr. Dina asked, uh, th uh, said thank you so much for this informative webinar and the excellent presentation. I agree with her. It's an excellent presentation. She has uh, two questions. First one, uh, for the Francesco patients, could we put patterns on 14 and 15 and 16 with very light power chain pacally and palatally to rotate posts? Uh, I think I think she 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 she, she said uh, if he would uh, if he puts the button palatally and packally 
uh, and use power chain uh, in, al in alternative manners to rotate them. Is it right? I think this is her question. It, it could be an option to uh, de-rotate the, yeah. the, the upper force. That could be an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, another question also, for, um, the second question from Dr. Dina. Uh, do we must always put lingual arch or TBA arch in segmented arch technique? I think you already answered this yes. question. Yes, uh, bye, boy. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Fadi Fahim, he asked, uh, what is the material and wire size of TBA and lingual arch, of transpalatal arch and lingual arch? What is the material and wire size? Thank you for the question. Yeah. There are two main options. Oh. Uh, the first option is the 0 0.36 uh, stainless steel, which is very stiff. Zero, 0 0.6? 0 0.036. Zero, uh, 0 0.026. I'm, huh? I'm, I'm yes, yes. write it down. Yeah. Okay, here it is. 0 point, um, 0 0.036. 0.0. Uh, 36 for uh, yeah. for the transpalatal for uh, the transpalatal bar yeah, yeah. Which is 0 0.9 millimeters yeah yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, it's very stiff and uh, allows us to create a good anchorage because yeah, it's very nice. stiff nice or we can choose tma uh, which is much more elastic and it's very useful to move the the teeth so the guideline is uh, when we want to create anchorage we need the stiffness so stainless steel is the best material if yeah. you want to do some movements today we have just talked about the uh, passive use of the um, transparatal arch and uh, um, and bars the best option is stainless steel because it's more uh, much more stiff okay another question from uh, dr mahmoud fathi uh, he said in cases of deep bite with diastema can we modify can we do modification with segmented arch by using many screw with power arm to produce intrusion at the time of diastema closure? In uh, the case of the, the first case or the last case? No, he, he, he considered a case of medium diastema with uh, extrusion of the upper incisor and he wanted to intrude them during the closure yes. of space. He asked, uh, is it possible to use many screw with, uh, with, uh, with a segmented arch, with power arm uh, to intrude during the closure of space? I think so. I think uh -huh. that a point to be considered can be the incisor proclination. Yes. Because uh, I think that uh, it's uh, important to consider the possibility of of extru oh, of, of proclination of uh, mm. of layering of incisor. Yes, due to the yes. screw is buckled to the yeah center of resistance. Of resistance. So there is the possibility that mm. the force acts buckle to the center yes. of resistance, and uh, the incisor could go proclined uh, mm. mm. could layer. Mm. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Another question from Dr. Dario Ribic. How to upright lower molar without extrusion, with intrusion only? Hmm. This is another, a different topic from uh, uh, this topic. <laughs> and, uh, we could discuss about uh, yeah. lines of action of forces and paths and uh, or even statically indetermined appliances such as alpha beta systems. But, but <laughs> could be another another uh, uh, topic than today but uh, uh, a good way to maintain vertical position of the molar while doing um, uh, while performing an upright thing uh, can be uh, using the minus screw very low um, in order to prevent uh, the extrusion of the molar I would like to make a drawing very high position of the button very low position of the screw Mm -hmm. So, force is intrusive and acts far from the center of resistance. So, while the tooth uh, uprights, it tends to intrude. Or another option is um, loops uh, with the vertical uh, mm -hmm. control of the position of the tooth. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, another question from uh, Dr. Uh, Brow uh, Shep Book uh, ask Can we use a continuous arch with intrusive arch wire on the lower? What is the difference with the segmented arch? Is, is it clear my question? Is the question yes. clear? Yeah. In a counterposition between uh, a, a, a continuous arch wire and segmented arch technique. Yes, yes. Continuous arch wire tends to uh, level the cubus P by intruding the and flaring the incisors. We have the incisor region. And here we have posterior region. We have an intrusive forces of the uh, posterior regions and uh, incisor regions and uh, extrusion of the intermediate premolar and canine region. Mm -hmm. This generates um, one main effect that is the extrusion of the posterior lateral segments uh, which tends to raise the DDO, the vertical dimension of occlusion. Vertical dimension of occlusion, but we know from literature that in the adult patient this is not stable. Extrusion of the lateral posterior segments, mm. it is not stable. Then yeah. we have a second problem, which is the uh, intrusion with a um, force buckle regarding center of resistance, and this leads to an intrusion with a flaring. This is impossible to, very hard to prevent. No, so no. the lower incisor tends to flare. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, the, for, the forces of a super elastic wire, uh, even the lightest force, are uh, uh, exceeding the forces required for an um, incisor intrusion. We know that uh, to intrude a, an incisor, we need very gentle forces, uh, about 10 to 15 grams. And mm. we know from the literature that even the most, the lightest. Um, Super elastic wire uh, generates 25 grams, so yeah. this is too much to uh, intrude in a, in a bodily way a lower incisor. So uh, this generates a, um, a problem that it's not possible to purely intrude uh, lower incisors, and uh, it is not possible to prevent the ex an extrusion of the lateral uh, segments, and this is not stable in the in the adult patient. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, I, th uh, I think uh, I think uh, uh, her qu uh, the question was directed to use this continuous arch uh, uh, for all arch with the intrusive arch mechanic uh, uh, and instead of using a segment uh, for the lower incisor only uh, uh, with the intrusive arch with the intrusive arch mechanics. Is it, uh, I think this is the question. And you you mentioned by uh, by the continuous arch will increase the vertical dimension uh, at the posterior segment, especially at the area of premolar. Uh, but but concerning the area of lower incisor, uh, you, you control the movement, uh, the labial movement or the free, the flaring of lower incisor by tying the lower incisor segment wire with the lingual arch. This is right. In segmental arch technique? Yes, yes, yes. Um, you uh, avoid, you prevent the flaring by, the, by, incisors. by uh, of incisor by tying them to the lingual arch. Uh, in this case, I uh, did a um, metal ligature, but uh, in uh, as a general way, mm -hmm. the uh, rule is uh, slightly different. We have the um, incisor segment let's draw a central incisor lateral proclination um, depends on the force line of action if the force as in this case that we share together passes buckle to the center of resistance we will intrude and will determine a proclination mm -hmm. If the force 
passes through exactly through the center of resistance, we will intrude with Without. proclination. And should we go distal to the center of resistance, we could even uh, intrude with a uh, reclination. This is more difficult from a technical point of view, but uh, in, a, in segmental arch technique, the effect depends on the points of the line of, of action of the force regarding the center of resistance mm -hmm. of the lower incisor. Yes, yes. In that specific case, um, I was scared I could uh, flare too much the incisors, so I decided to make the, the delegation. But the, yeah. the concept the idea is uh, the the the, the, line, the point of um, the line of the force in respect to the center yeah, of resistance. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Thank you. Another question. <laughs> Thank you for your, for your interpretation. Uh, another question from uh, Dr. Burko Bavoso. Sorry for the difficulties in the name. Because, oh, no, no, uh, Italian. Yeah. It's an Italian name. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have a lot of friends from Italy, but I can... Uh, I can I can uh, said her name without difficulty. <laughs> <But it's, laughs> Very strange. Uh, I have one one is Massimo. My, Massimo is friend is one of my friends from Rome. Uh, but but Massimo is the easiest way, <laughs> name <laughs> for <easy> me. <laughs> hey, uh, Doctor uh, Borku asked the uh, other option treatment for closing the asthma. Uh, uh, other option treatment for closing diastema in Muhammad, in the case of Muhammad. Uh, other option treatment for closing diastema. Do you have other option to close the diastema in case of Muhammad? Yes, I think we could go on purely on the lingual side. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that could be an, an, an option. Uh, mm -hmm. Another option could be clear aligners. Uh, mm -hmm. We could use clear aligners with mm -hmm. uh, um, vertical um, uh, attachment, uh, four millimeter, five millimeters, in order to control the, the root position. But this was not possible for um, uh, uh, budget reasons for uh, from the patient. And then the option uh, could be a um, straight wire, straight wire approach that yeah. could be an, uh, an okay. option. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mina Nagy asks, uh, how can we learn segmented arch uh, mechanics and technique? How, we, how can we learn? He said, uh, would you recommend the textbook or we should rely on basic knowledge of biomechanics? Unfortunately, <laughs> the, 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 the road to the biomechanics is uh, is quite uh, is quite long. And it's quite complicated. Yes, it's quite complicated <laughs> because uh, the basics are in um, in uh, biomechanics uh, principles. So uh, a good book in, um, in biomechanics is um, is necessary to to learn uh, the biomechanics fundamentals. Then yeah. the applications are. Uh, uh, a matter of, of experience uh, and I think that sharing the knowledge with other colleagues uh, uh, can be the best choice to to, um, uh, to compare different point of views. Uh, tonight Nazari and me have shared one um, some some cases some some ideas then there are so many uh, good uh, clinicians all over the world um, to, to um, with whom share uh, the knowledge and from whom uh, obtain new I, new ideas and there are so many interesting biomechanic uh, books for example i've heard uh, professor nanda but there are so many pro professor fiorelli professor Choi, so many interesting books and th this can be a start for um, the biomechanical uh, knowledge and then the segment arch technique is not a a real book, but uh, the, it's just an application of the biomechanical principles. I think, Nazario, do you agree with me or do you want to add something? Yes, yes. Nazario, okay. okay. Uh, I, oh. I, totally, I totally agree. I, uh, you agree with me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, later on, we, uh, we will ask you to listen in your email uh, a list of book concerning the biomechanics. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, thank we you. We will answer in... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Dr. Amri and Babi ask uh, how to activate a transpalatal arch 
for molar derotation and expansion. Okay. For both molar activation and uh, for molar derotation and activation. A good idea, a good uh, option can be uh, create a passive transpalatal bar. I want to draw it in blue, this nice blue. Yes, yes. You are clever in blue in drawing. <laughs> <laughs> So here we have our transpalatal bar and uh, we can uh, adaptive perfectly passive and then we can uh, take it out from uh, the patient's mouth and put it on uh, a piece of paper and then take a, um, take a pencil and draw a little bar close to the terminal of the transpalatal bar. Then we can uh, insert and activate the transpalatal bar for the rotation by activating the two terminals and checking on the paper that the angles uh, are exactly the same. So the angle of left and angle of right are uh, exactly the same. This is a a very a quite easy way to uh, check the um, uh, transpalatal bar activation. This is a, a first idea. Uh, and then, uh, as the colleague said, it is indicated to insert some um, expansion force, but it's quite easy to quite easy to um, to do. So uh, the molar will tend to derotate and to yeah. uh, go in a back direction. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. Another question from Doctor uh, Ezu. He asked, in case where you intrude 11 and tipped it medially, it was also positioned buccally with your technique. How you how could you move it bilaterally too? How you how you Thank could, you for your uh, question. The yeah, colleague is uh, extremely skilled because he uh, focused the point not that easy to, to, to see. Uh, thank you for your question because it allows us to uh, go in a deeper uh, consideration in, yeah. uh, in this case, to go yeah. into the deep. Uh, in this particular case, the tooth was quite proclined and uh, we were able to reach from a uh, lateral point of view the center of the resistance because the cantilever had a inward bending and it's not easy to see from this uh, um, perspective. But I want to help myself with a drawing. Mm -hmm. I have a picture somewhere in my uh, computer, but I don't want to steal all of your time. I want to draw this fantastic pink tooth with the center of resistance. In this particular case, we have a um, gap between uh, diastema between the incisors, and this allowed us to um, uh, to bend the wire so to obtain a position of the wire passing through the center of resistance and this allowed us not to uh, procline the, the tooth to yeah. intrude it without flaring uh, yeah. even more should we uh, retract the the tooth an option could be uh, for example using a second uh, cantilever starting from the, the cannon, retracting the, the, the incisor. That could be an option, or we could go from the lingual side, because mm -hmm. if we intrude it from the, uh, um, from the palatal side, we would have an uh, intrusion with retroclination. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Francesco. It was mm -hmm. the last question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was the last one. Uh, and thank you too much. Of, uh, yeah. Natasha, uh, would you uh, uh, please um, uh, show them the certificates of appreciation? And yes, 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 yes. Okay. Now we, we, you will receive a certificate of appreciation from It will be our... sent to your yeah. email. Okay, yes. but now we have to thank you very much. Yeah. Just if you uh, give me a chance, Dr. Ashraf. Yeah, take your time. Okay. Just wait, Dr. Francesco. Okay, this is, is the one. You, you, your certificate, Francesco. yeah.
okay and this is one for dr dr nazario yeah okay yeah Okay, Dr. Francesco, we will receive this for your email. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Nazario. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. Yeah. Okay, Thank the, you. The, the finishing words is for you, Dr. Asha. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Francesco, and thank you, Dr. Nazario. Uh, thank you too much. It's it's uh, really it was amazing lecture and it was very informative uh, for for me and for. Uh, all participants uh, and I hope to meet again inshallah in a lot of uh, webinars in uh, different meeting and we hope inshallah to visit our university to visit Egypt and uh, and also we will visit you in you in Italy inshallah <coughs> uh, thank you too much for all of you and for all participants and now uh, everyone uh, if you have a last call from Dr. Francesco before leaving this webinar Thank you. It has been a big pleasure and a big honor for me. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And hope to see you soon. Inshallah. Thank, thank you. Thank, yeah, Inshallah. thank you. Inshallah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you too much. Thank you. Really, really, I, I would like to thank you. Uh, and it's it's honor to listen.